Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back. We're live on a Friday afternoon here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're doing Think Tech Global right now uh, with India, with Varanasi India, with Kartiki Mishra, and we're talking about, uh, gee, we're talking about Hollywood, Bollywood. What's it all about? Hi, Kartiki. How are you? Hi, uh, I'm fine, Jay. <laughs> Good. So, uh, how has it been for you in the past month? Is life going well for you? Yes, let's going well. Exam seven years. Okay. Um, I suppose there have been a lot of things happening in India. You know, I read the uh, Indian newspapers. There's so many of them. We should only have so many newspapers in this country. Uh, the newspapers in, in the United States and in Hawaii are declining. There are fewer and fewer all the time. In India, there are so many newspapers, so many news stories. But we're going to skip that today. What we're going to talk about is Hollywood Bollywood. Um, that may not be news. Maybe there are certain elements of news in there, but it's Hollywood, Bollywood today, uh, and it's uh, what's it all about. So can you tell us what, what Bollywood is? Uh, basically, I think if I can describe uh, Bollywood, Bollywood is nearly as old as Hollywood, only a few years gap, I would say. And definitely Bollywood is the second largest film industry in terms of uh, producing films. In terms, of, in terms of earning, I would say, in revenue, first is the Hollywood. Uh, we produce nearly 1,900 films each year, and Hollywood produces around 800 films each year. And uh, basically, Hollywood movies are in English, and uh, Indian cinema, we have multiple languages, Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, Malayalam, most of them, many of them. Well, I, I, um, I must say, the, the, the movies are always very colorful. Uh, there's, uh, at least in my experience, they're, uh, they're very, um, um, they're romantic. Uh, the women, I have to say, the women are really beautiful. The men are really handsome. Um, and they're, 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 what do you want to call it? They're soupy in their plots. And I'm remembering, for example, uh, Slumdog, Slumdog um, Millionaire. I'm sure you've really? seen that. That was really a fabulous yeah, exactly. movie. Basically, Slumdog Millionaire was a movie directed by a Hollywood person, so I can't say it's a totally Bollywood film. Uh, it can be called as a joint venture, Bollywood actors and Hollywood directors working together, winning Oscar. But uh, Slumdog Millionaire got a lot of criticism in India just because of the reason. It showed a lot of poverty. That's the basic reason that uh, uh, didn't got that appeal in India. Though it showed the reality, but it is a partial reality of India, what it is in. In 21st well, you know, Slumdog Millionaire, uh, let's dwell on that for just a minute. Uh, it strikes me that um, there's a certain amount of reality that Slumdog Millionaire is covering, as a lot of these, um, you know, romantic uh, movies uh, in India. Uh, but how true are they? Are they um, a, a real test of reality? Are we getting, are we getting the real story, or is it a darker, sadder story than? and uh, all the, the happiness that we saw in Slumdog Millionaire. Okay, I can uh, say that, that uh, not all the movies are like uh, romantic in nature. Many of the Bollywood movies are uh, realistic in nature. The, uh, the movie Dangal was based on a uh, sports person. And many movies, uh, historical movies are also produced in India. So those movies are also realistic in nature. So I can say that movies are realistic, but it is a movie, so it should be far from reality. You can imagine that. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, um, you know, what a, there are many, many movies in uh, in India. I mean, way many more movies than we and we are producing more movies these days because the price of entry is, is lower because the equipment is cheaper and more people are interested and more young people coming into the field of videography. I mean, ThinkTech is a kind of an example of that. Um, it's easier to make a movie. Um, on the other hand, I think India still has us beat out by many, many fold because so many movies are, are being made. Am I right? Yes, yes. You're right. 1900 movies are not, not an easy job. Uh, we, uh, each and every state of India is working in producing a movie uh, in its own provincial languages. 
If Tamil Nadu is making a movie, 200 movies or 100 movies would be produced in Tamil. If Bollywood is making a movie or Bombay cinema is making a movie, uh, 300 movies would be in Hindi. So it's uh, divided. Indian cinema is divided into segments so that you can you can't call Bollywood just as uh, a simple word. Bollywood is only specific for Bombay industry, not for the Indian cinema. If you calculate the movies of Indian cinema, it's around 1900 a year. It's a lot. Mm. So uh, how 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 much of the Indian uh, movie you know production is in English? And how much is in Indian or uh, you know some uh, some local dialect of Indian? Uh, I think English movies are far produced less quantity in India because. Uh, people do not know much of English. Basically, if a person is uh, wishing to see a movie for entertainment, he or she would go for the uh, native dialect in which they talk. English movies are uh, frequently less produced in India compared to other languages. Ah, interesting. And I've also seen some movies, uh, and I mean, you see this in other ways too, uh, depicting you know uh, ordinary people living ordinary lives, uh, and it's a middle class kind of thing. Sometimes it's a uh, it's 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 comedy, uh, it's situation comedy, sitcom, um, and what's what's interesting to me is that the, these people and their lives, their homes, their jobs, uh, the cars they drive, the clothing they wear, the way their you know their households and are organized, and their the way their kids are educated and so forth, it looks just like middle class America. It looks just like America. It's incredible. Now, is this is this the way life is really lived, or you know, or is this um, the producer in India trying to make a movie that will appeal to people outside of India? I can say both. Uh, first, the appeal thing to appeal the people from outside world. It's also a trick to appeal the people that India is not more uh, a de developing nation. It is a developed nation on a way to make itself a nation of uh, global power and effect. And secondly, uh, I would say that this is far from reality. India is not that much developed, only the mega cities, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, Kolkata, these cities are developed. So you can get the image of United States in these cities. Hmm. What about, uh, I mean, we really need to talk about uh, documentaries, because documentaries, at least in this country, are more and more important. Um, they're essentially news stories, a lot of them, uh, and they educate people because, frankly, it's easier to watch a movie than read a paper or a book. Um, and so uh, we, have, we have seen a, a dramatic increase in the number of quality documentaries that are available to the public, uh, either, by, uh, either online or, or on broadcast television like, uh, like uh, PBS. So our know, question is, are, are people interested in documentaries in, Engl in uh, India? And um, are people, uh, are producers interested in making them? And if so, what kind of uh, documentaries do they make? Uh, documentaries are uh, produced in India. Many of them are there. Uh, it's difficult to say that documentaries get a mainstream in India. Documentary has yet to achieve a lot. But people watch documentary for educational purposes for increasing knowledge because it's different from a movie, presenting reality and educating people. So I think documentary, the trend of documentary is increasing day by day. Even myself, I watch serious documentaries. Well, you're a student. And I imagine, you know, I mean, I think we're all students of life and we all try to learn all the time. And I know that India is into education. So do, do documentaries play a role in your education, Karthiki? Do you, do you watch them as, in party, as part of your weekly schedule? Uh, what kind of documentaries do you like? Uh, I watch documentaries. Definitely, I love them. And uh, most of the sources of documentaries are from YouTube. And uh, channels like Vice is there on YouTube. Uh, DW Documentaries on YouTube. BBC Documentaries on YouTube. These channels are very much informative and providing knowledge. Not only in terms of, uh, I would say, entertainment, but information at the same time. And I have seen many documentaries. I personally like historic documentaries. It's funny you should say that because, you know, Think Tech is on YouTube. And um, in my life, uh, I look at YouTube every day, and a lot of people I know look at YouTube. Um, and we learn a lot. You know, for example, if I want to learn a, 
a program like um, Adobe Premiere, which we use to edit, I, I, go on, uh, I go on YouTube and I can see an un, unlimited number of uh, movies, instruc instructional movies on, on how to use uh, Adobe Premiere. Um, and, I'm, and I'm getting the idea that the YouTube that you look at is the same YouTube that I look at. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, we, are both, um, we both have access to the same content on YouTube. Is that right? Yes, that's right. What an uh, American watch and what an Indian can watch is same today. The only difference is, uh, is the terms of frequency. Uh, American can watch uh, it in terms of much more greater frequency due to the use of that documentary. But in India, people uh, are now increasing day by day to tend to watch documentaries because uh, documentaries solve a lot of problems in India. Sometimes if I have some problem, I watch a documentary or watch an instruction video to solve that problem. For example, I didn't know how to make a tie. So I learned to make a tie through YouTube only. Uh, <laughs> documentary. Of course. You know, it's funny because uh, our executive vice president, Carol Miley, and I went to a, uh, a special meeting of YouTube, of YouTube uh, producers here a couple of years ago. And they were telling us, you know, if you, if you cover fundamental things that people need in their lives, like how to make a tie, how to cook a certain dish, uh, how to sew, how to handle those household chores, you, you will be so popular. And it's true. They came down to this, this meeting and people do that and they make really fundamental type instruction movies and they get millions and millions of hits. <laughs> How to make a tie, of course. <laughs> well, does this, does this make you want to get into it? I mean, you know, so I mean, I'm so happy that we know you. And part of, part of that is you're interested in the US, you're interested in video, you're interested in joining us on a live internet experience like this. That's really fabulous. And I'm happy, I'm happy that we connected. But does, does it also reflect, Carnegie, that you like to be in the movies? Um, it's everybody's dream to act in a movie, and I think if I get a chance, I would act. But I don't think I'm not an actor. I'm not a very well actor, I think. <laughs> maybe, maybe you want to be a producer. And that's, that takes me to uh, the next question I want to ask you. So who in India are the producers? Who are the ones who think up the movies? Who the, I mean, you've got to have choreographers in one of those, uh, you know, song and dance movies. You have to have, uh, you know, a lot of talent. In fact, sometimes I think that the quality of those movies in terms of the song and the dance and the way it's presented, the, you know, the quality, the production values of the movies, they're just as good as Hollywood. I mean, the real Hollywood. I mean, not Bollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. Um, so who goes into that? Are those, are those people who, uh, people who have gone through school? Have they gone to film school? Have they worked, um, you know, in the industry? Have they been to Hollywood itself in order to learn those production values? Who are they? Who's making the movies? Who's conceiving of the movies? Who's writing the scripts? Who's doing the production? Okay, if I have to describe that in simple words, I would say there are production houses in India like Hollywood. Like you have Paramount Production, Universal Production. We also do have production houses. Uh, yes, Raj Productions is there and Chili Productions is there. So there are production studios in India which produce movies or which invest in movies. Generally, these production houses have actors which have earned money and are ready to reinvest that money into the movie in which they are producing. So there are many directors or actors in India who uh, gain revenue uh, to acting. And then they use that the same money to produce any other movie. So it's a kind of cycle, investing and gaining money, investing and gaining money. If you invest um, money in a very successful movie, there is a lot of terms that you will earn a lot from it. So that's a cycle, I think. Uh, production houses are something, uh, I would say, depending upon the actor, how large the actor or how tidal he or she is has. And uh, I think people go to Hollywood for uh, act, learning acting or direction. Okay, we're going to take a short break. Uh, Karnaki Mizra, he's a student at, uh, at college um, studying business, among other things, in Varanasi, uh, India, which is in the northeast part of the country. He joins us today by Zoom, as he does every few weeks. Today we're talking about Hollywood, Bollywood, trying to understand and get a handle on life in India, business in India, entertainment in India. We're going to take a one-minute break. We're going to come back, and we're going to ask him who's investing 
in these movies in India? And how do you get to be an actor in these movies in India? And who are the popular actors? And how well are they paid? We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of A Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for A Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for A Likeable Science. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with Karki Mishra in Varanasi, India. We're talking about Hollywood, Bollywood, and we're trying to get a handle on what goes on in the movie industry in Hollywood. So I guess the first question I want to ask, just to look at the business side of this, is who is investing in the Bollywood movies? Is it local Indians? Is it, is it global? Because one of, the, one of the things that we should cover here is the relationship of Bollywood and Hollywood and, and all the movie makers around the world. Who's investing in the Indian movies, which clearly require a substantial amount of investment these days? Uh, basically, businessmen who are ready to invest in movies, and secondly, the actors who gain a lot of money from uh, the movies they have acted in. So they try to reinvest the money into production houses. So the production houses are generally made by the actors themselves. Many of the production houses are made by actors. For example, uh, Raj Kapoor's production house. He was an actor in 1950s. Uh, he made his own production house. And it is still famous, RK Studios and production house. So there are many actors who are really invest there in the movie. Yeah. Are, are the production houses uh, centered in one city, in, in Calcutta or Mumbai, or are they spread around the country? They are spread around the country. They are spread around the country. The largest production house in the world is Ramoji Film Studios. It's in India. Ah, interesting. So if I'm if I'm a, an actor and I've made it big, and that certainly happens in this country too, do I have a chance of being so popular that I can go into politics and run for office and be a big political figure in the country? Does that happen? Yes, that does that, that it happens in India. Uh, I know Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was an actor. He acted in movies like Terminator, Conan the Barbarian, and he went into politics. He became the governor of California. In the very same manner, actors uh, start acting, and one of the two, uh, two three famous people are there who started as an actor, and they ended up as a politician. Uh, one very good example would be uh, Jaya Lalita. She was uh, chief minister of Tamil Nadu, and uh, she was an actor. She started her career as an actor. Then she changed her career into politics, and she became chief minister uh, of Tamil Nadu. Okay, that works well. Um, you know, and, and the um, these production houses, um, they the the top production houses, I guess, pay more to the actors. How much? How much does an actor make? I mean, do you have any sense of that? Or an actress? Uh, how much do they make in American money uh, for, say, a big film? Uh, it would be a difficult question to turn or change that into dollars. But certainly I can say that depending upon the actor, how famous he or she is, the production house is paid there. For example, if you are casting a film, you would pay a lot or a hefty amount of money to him to cast him in a movie. Uh, so it depends upon the actors whom you have seen into a movie. Uh, generally, a kind of uh, partiality is still there in India between uh, actresses and actors. Actors is sometimes pay more than the actors. So kind of nepotism, this is in Hollywood, it is in Bollywood also. Yeah. I, and I would take it that the uh, most popular actors and actresses are in the most popular films, and that the most popular films are the, are the films um, that are very Indian in culture and costume, uh, the films that are that are romantic and glamorous, uh, the films like *Slumdog Millionaire* or films like that that are that have romantic plot lines 
and so forth. I would imagine that those films, call them song and dance films, romance films, are the most popular in the Bollywood offering. Am I right? Yes, they're most popular in Bollywood. Uh, currently, the trend is changing. People are moving from romantic movies to realistic movies these days. And these movies, realistic movies, are earning money also. The movie which I talked about, Dangal, uh, Dangal was a quite hit in India. It was about two sisters who took part in uh, Commonwealth Games and won gold. It was based on a real story. It won, uh, I think it earned around 144 million US dollar in, uh, in overall currency. Uh, it did a very great business in China. It did a very great business in India. And uh, the Bollywood movies are now changing to a global thing. Um, in terms of selling tickets, also I would say uh, Hollywood, uh, I think, sells around 2.6 billion tickets overall in the world. And uh, Bollywood sells around 3.6 billion tickets <laughs> overall in the world. I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, in terms of affecting the global audience, uh, Bollywood is much more impactful, I think. Yeah. Well, that's impressive. And what's the price of a ticket? If I go to a movie theater, I suppose there are many, many movie theaters. I suppose a lot of people go to the movie theater. What's the price of a ticket at the movie theater? You know, here it's, oh, gee, it's getting pretty expensive. It's you need 10 12 $15 already for a first-run movie. What, what does it cost in India to go to the movies? Uh, the cost of a movie depends upon the taxes or the state in which that movie is released. Sometimes the movies are taxi. For example, two great movies are uh, released in states of India tax-free. The government does not include taxes on those movies, so they are much cheaper. A general trend, trend I would say, a uh, ticket in India is around uh, 300 rupees. That would be around something uh, $10, $10 or $20. Oh, it's around the same ballpark then. So what about action movies? You know, in the U.S., it seems like to me, uh, in the movie houses uh, and um, on the Internet, uh, or rather on cable Television, you know, has a lot of movies. So many action movies. In fact, violent action movies. Action movies that involve, you know, gunshots and explosions and all kinds of violence. Uh, they're very popular. In fact, I would say they're, in general, seems to me, more popular and, and more uh, ubiquitous um, than, than movies involving romance and happy stories. Uh, is that trend playing out the same way in India? Yes, that's playing the same way in India. The, the, the violent theme which uh, Bollywood learned from Hollywood is now starting to show effects in India. Films are now growing much more raw in terms of violence and in action. Uh, for example, uh, people are starting now to invest in action movies because they pay off that money, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I, and I want to ask you one, one question sort of off the side. It, it strikes me that people don't really explore this, and maybe they should, is that, you know, the, the, the dark side of every movie industry is the pornography, and pornography is worldwide, um, and pornography is a huge industry involving billions of dollars of gross revenue, however they distribute those movies. Is there a pornography industry in India? No, that's not as great or big as uh, America. It's not that. It's not like that. Mm. Okay, that's a short answer. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you. Let me ask you now uh, whether. <laughs> We'll have to have another show on that, yeah. Uh, we'll have to, you know, the short answer is, what about American movies? I mean, you have access to YouTube, um, you have access to the Internet, um, and I'm sure there's a demand in India. People in India love movies anyway. That's always been the case, as long as I know. Uh, how popular are American movies, and how accessible are they? And would you prefer to watch an American movie or an Indian movie these days? Uh, I think I have no words to describe the popularity of Hollywood in India. I can't describe it in words. The hype of Avengers Infinity War uh, releasing on 27th April, people are going crazy over that movie. That they would watch Avengers Infinity War on the very first day, first show. And Hollywood collects a lot of revenue from uh, Bollywood cinema because of the tough competition it is giving them to the Indian industry. And TV series like Game of Thrones are quite so popular in India. Every person in uh, college going to him knows about Game of Thrones and uh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> one of my friends, 
one of my friend knows i i think he has watched game of thrones four or five times and he knows each and every dialogue of game of thrones <laughs> so you can know how popular hollywood is <laughs> Well, my last area of inquiry for you, Karnaki, is, is the globalization of the whole industry. <clears throat> you know, it, it became uh, obvious a few years ago that the, um, the Chinese were investing in a lot of American movies. In fact, they bought, you know, movie houses in, in Hawaii, so, so in, in the United States, and, um, and, and so did the, 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 the Japanese. So you have a you know, sort of global investment process, and then you have a global production process. And then you notice that the producers on a lot of these popular American movies are, in fact, Chinese. Um, so there's a, a sort of an integration, um, a, a cross-fertilization of the cultures and of the storylines and the actors and so forth. And the industry becomes globalized. So you're just as likely to see a movie produced by an American house with American talent as you are, you know, uh, with Chinese investment and Chinese producers and videographers and what have you. <clears throat> and so um, you cannot assume that any movie that's popular uh, will be, uh, you know, made in only one country. Uh, a really big movie is going to involve an international effort. And I guess my question to you is, you see that in India. Is that happening in India? Are these, are there, are there cross, cross-invested movies and cross-produced movies um, in India, and do you see also that this is a global trend? I see it that way. It's a global trend, and in five or ten or twenty years, we will see movies uh, produced anywhere, showing anywhere, and popular anywhere. Do you see that? Yes, I see that. I have two brilliant examples to answer your question. Uh, one movie was produced in or uh, was produced by Indian Reliance Company. The name of Hollywood movie was Ghost in the Shell. It was based on an anime. Uh, which, which was Japanese. The story was from Japan, the production was from India, and the actors were from Hollywood. So you can say that uh, the things are now changing into global uh, phenomena. And second movie which I have example is of China. Uh, one movie was there known as Kung Fu Yoga. So one Chinese production house and Viacom 18, uh, Indian production house, invested in that movie, and both Chinese and Indian actors worked in that movie. So you can see that trend that uh, films are not becoming much more global these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that being the case, let's assume that we agree that in, oh, 5, 10, 20 years, uh, the, the movie business is going to be global. It's going to be cross-cultural at the least. Um, it's, 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 you know, you might as well see a movie from one country, one continent or another. Um, and it'll all be very good, very interesting. So where does that leave? the Indian movie genre. Do you, do you think the Indian movie genre has a future? Will it always be popular? Or will it be assimilated into the global process and be less popular, including in India? Um, okay. Uh, I think about Indian industry is quite old in terms of, we are 100 years old. So in terms of popularity, after Hollywood, Bollywood is the only thing. So. It will become integrated into a world connection. I would say Hollywood actors working in Bollywood movies, Bollywood actors working in Hollywood movies. So it is becoming a global trend. So there would be not a one particular cinema, but we will say a global cinema of actors and directors from all over the world working together uh, as one uh, film industry or a cinema industry. Yeah. One last question, Carnegie. You know, you chose this topic, and it's very interesting and important, and I, I hope we can discuss it again, uh, you know, in various aspects. But my question to you is, um, is there a reason why you chose it? Are you specifically interested in this? Do you think this could be a career aspiration for you? I chose this topic because of interest, because a lot of people in India watch uh, Bollywood movies and Hollywood movies, and I can say the same for American people. Uh, both are lovely in terms of making movies and seeing movies. So I thought that not only in terms of watching, but as a career also. There is a lot of chance that an average American person can get a job in Bollywood movie uh, as a writer, as a dancer, or as a director. So it, it could be a possibility in future. We can see that in uh, next 20 to 20 years or 30 years. And management, I, as I'm student of business, so this is a very increasing threat of movie management or business management in terms of movies. So it is a lot of, I would say, industry prospect is there about both the film industry. Okay, great. 
Thank you, Carnegie. It's been a great discussion, a great topic. I look forward so much to seeing you again in a few weeks for, for another look at India, uh, another examination of life in India, where India is going, what it's doing, and what you're doing. Thank you so much, Carnegie Mishra of Varanasi, India. Aloha, as they say. Aloha, <laughs> namaste.